Happiness, happiness. Can you learn to be happy? According to an article published in Medical News Today, the answer to that question is, indeed you can. You and I will take a look at the research and identify exactly what that research tells us about how we can enhance our happiness, our sense of well-being, with simple, easy-to-do activities. Stephen Carter here, and I am your host. I'll be sharing this information in two of my shows, those shows being the Happiness Mindset Podcast and the Easy Stress Cures Podcast. This information is relevant to listeners in both shows. For more than four decades, I've helped thousands of people move from stress to success and, on the way, create lives of happiness and fulfillment. You'll find more about my background and our work at our website, which is stressreliefradio.com. In an article summarizing research around the question, Can You Learn to Be Happy?, published in Medical News Today, the answer is, indeed you can. In this episode, I'll share the research findings that can help guide you and I to be more consistently happy. From the article published in Medical News Today with the title, Happiness Can Be Learned, But It May Take Practicing Seven Habits. The article written by Robbie Berman. The article summarizes research that tells us, indeed, happiness can be learned through consistent practice of specific habits. These habits, supported by psychological and neuroscience research, are designed to enhance well-being and to promote a more positive outlook on life. This study from the University of Bristol in the UK discusses outcomes from their Science of Happiness program, which they've been offering since 2018 to help students achieve a sense of well-being. That course is founded on research. The study supporting that course found that personal happiness can be achieved through evidence-informed habits, and those effects can be long-lasting for those who continue to practice what they learned. Other educational institutions have similar curricula. However, this study is the first to track the long-term success of such practices. In the section entitled How to Be Happy, Dr. Bruce Hood is the senior author of the study. He is also the author of The Science of Happiness, Seven Lessons for Living Well, he listed what he identified as happiness hacks taught in the Science of Happiness coursework. Those happiness hacks? Number one, perform acts of kindness. Perform acts of kindness. Number two, increase social connections including initiating conversations with people you don't know. Number three, savoring one's experiences. Savoring one's experiences. Number four, deliberately drawing our attention to the positive events and aspects of your day. Number five, practicing feeling grateful and endeavoring to thank people that you may not have sufficiently thanked. Number six, being physically active. And seven, exploring mindfulness and other meditation techniques. Additional information that is covered in this article includes the value of shifting focus for happiness, what happens in the brain when we're happy? Happiness in the brain. The article also adds that about 50 to 60% of 
Maintaining a sense of well-being comes from our internal work. The final line in this study, happiness is a decision. Happiness is a decision. In addition to the information shared in the article, I would like to share seven additional ways to enhance your sense of happiness and well-being. All of these suggestions are founded on research. You may be saying to yourself, wait a minute, Steve, we just learned about seven activities and now you're going to give us more? That's a whole bunch of activities. And, of course, you would be absolutely right. I'll have the seven activities that I shared from the article in the show notes, and I will also list these additional seven activities. What I suggest is that you go through the list and you pick one, two, maybe three of the activities and begin with that one or those two or three. For example, you may choose to engage in conversations with strangers. And during those conversations, you may have some kind comments that you can share with those individuals. Apply those one, two, or three activities for several days. And once you get in the habit of doing those, then go back to the list and add one or two more. Over time, you're going to be able to incorporate all of these activities into your daily life, and as a result, you're going to feel consistently happier. So, let's now visit these seven additional activities that I suggest you consider. Number one, practice savoring the present. Practice savoring the present. Engage fully in the current moment by turning into your senses. This can be done during everyday activities such as walking, eating, spending time in nature. And I would add here to develop that habit, the habit of practice savoring the present. You're likely going to need to be intentional and that may mean leaving yourself post-it notes as reminders, sending yourself emails reminding you to be present, adding reminders to your calendar. After a few days of practicing savoring the present, you may not need those reminders, but they are a great way to begin building that habit. Number two, Take breaks from technology. Take breaks from technology. Frequently disconnecting from technology can reduce stress and increase presence, and that can enhance your overall sense of happiness. Number three, engage in enjoyable activities and novel experiences. Trying new activities and hobbies can boost your mood and provide a sense of anticipation that enhances happiness. Number four, practice gratitude. Practice gratitude. The research is very, very clear on the emotional and even the physical benefits of gratitude practices. Routinely acknowledge things you are grateful for, being grateful, engaging in the habit of gratitude can increase long-term happiness and appreciation for life. Number five, focus on fulfilling relationships. Focus on fulfilling relationships. Spend quality time with the ones you love and be present during those interactions. This is going to improve your sense of well-being. And by the way, being present together does not mean that you each uh, are focused on your own phones. Be present with each other. Number six, practice self-compassion. 
Treat yourself with kindness during difficult times. That habit can build resilience and improve your relationship with the most important person in your life, and that is you, yourself. Practicing self-compassion can also improve relationships with others. Number seven, clarify and align with your values. Clarify and align with your values. Reflect on what is truly important to you and ensure your actions align with these values to achieve lasting fulfillment. Will these habits initially require effort and commitment? Absolutely, yes, they will. You know the importance of maintaining physical health through regular exercise. These habits can improve your sense of happiness, your sense of well-being. However, just like exercise, you do have to actually engage in these activities. Soon enough, they're going to be habits, and those habits are going to enhance your emotional and perhaps even your physical well-being. I'll have the article summarizing this research linked in the show notes to include the seven habits identified in that article, as well as the additional seven habits we just discussed. If you would like to be in touch to share suggestions about how to enhance your happiness, your sense of well-being, I would love to hear from you. Email me at cartermethod at gmail.com, cartermethod at gmail.com. If you're not already following the Happiness Mindset Podcast and the Easy Stress Cures Podcast, this is a perfect time to follow the shows in your listening app of choice. You'll find previous episodes of this show as well as other shows dedicated to stress relief and positive living by visiting our website at stressreliefradio.com. Until our next visit together, your host, Steve Carter, wishing for you and your loved ones blessings in abundance. <music>